Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of The Calling Uncensored. I'm so excited today for our guest. I'm here with Shauna Lee, who is an intuitive healer and a celebrity manifestation coach. She has her own podcast called The Soul Frequency, and she is the number one best-selling author of The Soul Frequency, Your Healthy, Awakened, and Authentic Life. So I'm so excited to have her on the show. We're going to dive in deep and just, as you know, we sort of um, let the conversation flow organically of whatever is divinely guided to come out. And um, we're going to just dive right in. So welcome to the show, Shauna. Thank you. I'm so happy to be with all of you guys today. Yay, me too. Perfect. So your story, I just really resonate with your story. And I know so many of our listeners are going to resonate it as well. Um, can you just start, give, get a little background about yourself and how you got started with what you do now? Or your transformation and just how it came about? Yeah. So I think I went through, when I was born, I actually had a gift of seeing other dimensions. So I came in with a gift. I was actually, um, had two spirit guides that came with me um, onto the planet. And since I didn't have any brothers or sisters, um, they were, as far as I was concerned, living in my household. And it took me a while to realize that my parents couldn't see them. So it was, it was a very funny scene. Like my mother would go to sit on the couch and I'd be like, what are you doing? You're going to sit on my friend. And, and so it was just kind of like a sitcom in my household. And after it became clear that really nobody was seeing them and nobody was experiencing life like I was, then I became very concerned about what was normal. Um, so for much of my young life, I really wanted to be normal. I would look at anybody else and say, what's normal? What should I be doing? Um, which is a real bifurcation from who you really are. And I went through much of my life that way. And I decided I was going to be successful in life and I was going to build a, a business. And I did that. And so I was checking all the boxes, right? Like amazing husband, like great child, like successful business. And then I got to a point where I woke up one day and was like, this isn't my life. Like I'm not supposed to be living this life. And it was devastating because so much of the outer world believed something about my life, right? And, and reflected back to me that my life was amazing and I wasn't feeling amazing inside. And not just not feeling amazing, but feeling literally like this is not my life. Like I can't be here in this reality. And so it was extremely confusing. Um, it took a lot of like kind of unwinding at that time to, to really understand what was going on. And simultaneously, I started eating healthier and becoming interested in my physical body and holistic health. And, and I would just spend nights Googling all of this information. And, and so as my life started to change and unwind, and I like to call my transformation one of those pull the rug out from underneath you types of transformation. Oh, I uh, <laughs> I'm sure you know. Um, not subtle at all. Not no, subtle at all. Subtle about it at all. Yeah. And so... Um, so I started my business really helping people with holistic health. I, was, I wasn't sure about what else was being born inside of me. And I thought, well, I know I can help people with that. I've really kind of, you know, got a handle on that in my own life. And as I started to work with people in person, I had an in-person office, I started to see something else. Like, and more and more people started coming and I started to see that it had nothing to do with food. Like that we weren't even really having a conversation about food. And what was going on is I was being shown the energetic ties between the belief sets that this person had in the current day. So I was, it was like threads of string going back to where the belief was created, who it was created by, was it really our belief or was it somebody else's belief that we adopted? I mean, there was just so much information being shown to me. And so I started having all of these conversations that had nothing to do with meal plans, but like, okay, here's why you're eating and here's what's going on and here's how you're out of alignment. And I kind of, I joke that it's an energetic chiropractic practice. I was like, I'm just going to put people's energy into alignment, which is then going to cause them to have different experiences in their life. And so that's where the soul frequency really was born. And the soul frequency was a download that I got one day when I was really looking at no two people are the same energetically or the same in any way, right? And that everyone has their own unique soul frequency. And that energy is very powerful when we are aligned with it, when we're living in the truth of it, and when we're able to create from it. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Yeah. I love that story. And um, it makes, I was thinking too, like one of my first, um, when I first started writing my blog, I think it was called Holistic Nutrition Junkie. It was like, nutrition was like my gateway, quote unquote, gateway, gateway drug. I referred to it that pushed, you know, that opened up and then started teaching holistically. It's so funny how it unfolds. Um, it is. It is. And I talk about nutrition, like kind of not the specifics of it, but the importance of having a clean vehicle in the beginning of my book, The Soul Frequency, mm -hmm. because it's, it is such a gateway to, to higher consciousness. It's a gateway that a lot of people take to higher consciousness, but it's also really important so that your energy can run through your body properly yeah. and you can access your highest creative potential. So it yeah. is an important piece. I think whether you get there first or whether you get there at some point, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's totally guided on my journey as well to open up and have that clean lifestyle. So yeah. I didn't know that that's what was happening at the time, right? Right. <laughs> guided in that direction and then like started to meditate, but opening up to be that clear and open channel so you can call in higher frequencies and be able to hold them within yep. your physical being. And there was a lot of transition. I remember when I started to open up and call in these higher frequencies before my body was completely acclimated to be able to hold them. Right. And so that was a very interesting phase as well during that spiritual awakening process. And I know a lot of subscribers are in that phase right now. A lot of listeners to this podcast are in that phase right now that I do believe your personhood matters and how energy flows through your body. You literally are a channel, a vehicle, um, a frequency connecting spiritual and the physical realms together. You, you are this conduit. That's how I view it. It's true. And in the beginning, when this all started opening up for me, I used to have these, I think like anything in life, it's like when we learn to walk or learn to ride a bike, there's new learning to managing or integrating some of the energy that comes through. And at the very beginning, I remember this so well, I used to have to go and like, pass out at certain times in the day, like literally for a 15 minute cat nap. Like I would be after a session, I would go home and I would just have to lay down in the bed and sleep for 20 minutes. And I felt like I could come back to my body after I did that. And so now that doesn't happen for me. But at the beginning, my body was having, you know, its own learning process of how to, how to move this energy through and how to not have it take my, you know, take all of my energy um, to do it. And so that has, you know, changed over time. Mm -hmm. So then can you speak to, so you were at one point more in a corporate setting, but you realized that this is not something that was fulfilling your soul at some point and, and that, and that hit you and, and then what happened? Yeah. So I think we, we chase success sometimes as thinking that when we get there, you know, something's going to feel better, it's going to be different. And certainly that's usually not the case. And so I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I wasn't feeling like my cup was full with what I was doing. I was also feeling like, I don't know if I can live the rest of my life like this, mm -hmm. like it, the cost was going to be too great. And so I really had to start to shift my energy from the concept of like, I serve a greater whole of a company, right? I'm a piece of a company or I work for a company structure, like an already laid foundation. So it's a very different energy to come into something that's already been created, right? Mm -hmm. Like if we work for a corporation, it's like, even if you have an amazing role, I mean, I coach people that are, you know, heads of fortune 500 companies. So even if you have a big role in that and a big responsibility and a big paycheck, like it doesn't necessarily mean you have shifted your energy to what is entrepreneurship or living a mission or creating a mission in the world, which is a totally different energy to create something from the ground up mm -hmm. is just different, right? Than to come into something that's already formed. And so what I saw in my practice as I started to, you know, people started to be drawn that were going through similar things that I had been through and really feeling called. I think a lot of us are feeling called to really step into what is my truth and what is it I'm supposed to be doing on the planet and sharing with people. And so that was going on. And I saw that there was this energy, right? Shift that needed to happen between I serve a greater whole as in a company and I am the sole creator conduit contact with something that wants to be born through me and starting to look at it as if you are the doula or the mother or the midwife, right? For what wants to come through, like the soul frequency wanted to come through me. And some people go, well, what is the soul frequency? I don't even know what that is. It is something that was birthed through me. And it was very clear from, from my guides that like, this is what it was to be, right? Like I wasn't to mess with that, right? Or, or change it. I was just to 
be the good steward of it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, for anybody that's making those transitions in their life, it's really starting to, of course, do practices or whatever feels good and right to you to open up that guidance and to start trusting it and listening more to it and allowing what wants to come through to come through. I mean, journaling is great for that. Like automatic writing is great for that. Certainly meditation, um, even being in nature, I think is a really powerful catalyst for information, you know, just popping down and, and you being able to take that. So there's definitely though, I think sometimes we get in this construct where we say, gosh, I've been the head of this company or I've had this big role with this company. Why is it seeming difficult to then just go out and grow my mission, right? Like it should just be the same thing. And mm -hmm. I think it's helpful to know that it's not the same thing energetically mm -hmm. and that there is a transformational process to that path. Yes, I totally resonate with this. Um, I've been, I feel like um, there's an opening up to the divine, feminine, receptive, allowing energy that has to occur because we live in this over masculinated energy, which is all about the doing, all about the taking action, or all about trying to figure out from a logical perspective, you know, the next step or what we should be doing um, versus tapping into by allowing to receive and be the conduit to the inspiration, to getting the download, and then actually having the courage to take the next step before you see the picture, because you're not going to see the picture, yeah. right? The soul is not here painting your whole picture out necessarily all at once. Like you're almost, you're guided to take courageous action through the unknown, through your, your faith is tested to take those actions. And so oftentimes we get caught up in the masculine or the anal energy or the analytical brain, which says, how is this going to work? How am I going to make money at it? What, what kind of marketing do I need to do? Oh, well, this person did that. So I got to do that kind of thing. It's like, they're try trying to figure it out from the analytical place. So I see it as calling in the divine, like letting your soul be your, your divine guidance to be the path that's laid, like actually be the path, but then allowing your logical brain, because we do use it and it is valuable to allow us to sort of like tweak, you know, the path that we're on to make decisions on it that make, you know, logical sense, but not let it become the driver. It's not in the driver's seat. It's more in the passenger seat sort of saying, okay, well maybe here just turn left. Just, you know what I mean? Like the path is divinely guided, but then you can, you can sort of like move through the path by using your logic, but don't let the logic or the analytical brain take the, take the horns, take the reins, you know? Yeah, it's such a good point. And I think the crux of the situation is that, because I've done a lot of studying on fear, because the level of like terror and fear that I moved through in my own transformation was earth shattering. And there were times I literally thought it would gobble me up. And so I say that I, I got a PhD in fear through my own transformation. And it really had me need to understand this idea of fear. And the reason that we go into our logical mind is because our ego, when it's triggered by fear, goes into safety mode, right? And that logical mind kicks in 110% to save your life. It thinks you are in danger, right? When you're doing anything that is not a known thing that you've done in the past, that fear will kick on, your logical mind will kick in, and it's very hard to hear your heart space. So it's not a typical, if we're afraid of money or we're transferring jobs, to be in the space of, like you said, I got to have the set marketing program. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Like very on the mental plane. And the truth is, is that as you go down this journey, like you well know, you're going to be taught like faith and trust in something much bigger than you can see. And like you said beautifully, you're going to see A to B, B to C, C to D. You're not going to see A to Z right? That's the fear going, I need to see the whole picture before I'm willing to take the step from A to B. Mm -hmm. And I always like to give people the confidence that you can always pivot, right? We're so afraid of making the wrong choice. We're so afraid. What if, the, what if B is not the right next step, right? It's going to be, it's going to ruin everything. That's what your fear will tell you. You make one wrong step, it's going to ruin everything. And I tell my clients all the time, let me tell you all the wrong steps, the technically wrong steps I've made in my life and in my business, because I've made tons of them, right? Mm -hmm. But I also know the infinite possibilities on my side, and I can pivot at any time. And they say that people in mastery are in mastery because they've made more, they've had more failure, made more wrong steps than the person that won't even try, right? And so we can't be afraid 
of, of moving forward, of taking action, because it's going to be, you know, so-called wrong. Um, there is no wrong. There's only lessons, right? We learn certain lessons like, oh, that's not where I want to keep going because that hurts or that's not feeling good or that's not working. Right. Um, but you ultimately are going to be on the right path when you're at the emotional heart space energetic level, right? Rather than the mind. So when the mind kicks in, it's good to just realize like, is there fear in my field? Am I feeling any fear? Is fear coming up? Am I trying to swallow fear or suppress the fear by going right into my head, right into making lists, right? Or signing up for all of these things that I need before I can take an action step, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, I mean, it's notorious, right? As, in, as new entrepreneurs, like we want to learn everything before we take one action step, right? I mean, it's like, I'm going to take a hundred courses before I take an action step. I'm like, no, take a hundred courses and take a hundred action steps, right? Like, cause that's, what's going to take that information and, and integrate it into your life. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, really touching on the whole, you know, spiritual law of surrender. I feel when you truly step onto a soul guided path, you will go through the gauntlet of your faith being challenged. It's almost like an initiation. I haven't talked to one spiritual entrepreneur that has not gone through um, and literally had their own coming to Jesus moments, if not many, where it's like you are being challenged to surrender in full faith, not blind faith, but full faith based on the fact that you are being guided. Because at this point on the journey, you're already receiving the synchronicities or the signs or the guidance or the nudges. And you're really being challenged on a soul level to follow, you know, your heart versus your ego. Absolutely. And one of the things like that I saw that gets in the way of this, because I'm always looking for what's in the way of this, mm -hmm. because like, we can know that we need to take action or we can know that our heart's telling us a certain thing. And yet it's not happening. Like we're not doing it. Right. So I'm always going like, well, what's in the way of that? And one of the things that after coaching all of these people that I see that rises to the surface is we don't know how to communicate to the, our loved ones and the people in our life and the people that are close to us, how this change is occurring for us in a way that leaves them feeling intact, right? That causes, that doesn't cause them to go into fear about it or fear about who they are in the world, right? Because if we say we're changing, then they're going to start questioning themselves and we just don't have the words to have these conversations. And so what happens, like I started seeing this pattern, right? Is where we would be secretly having this evolution inside of us and we're hesitating telling at least some people in our life that it's going on. And so it's like the secret thing, right? That's going on for a period of time. And by the time we get to the point where it just can't be secret anymore, like we have held this back for so long, then we end up just literally blurting it all out, right? On one day, like, you don't understand, I'm changing and this is going to change and that's going to change and, and just kind of like going off, right? And throwing the whole kitchen sink into somebody's lap. And that person's like, what is going on here? Like, what happened, right? And they're just trying to catch up because, because they don't know all this evolution that's been going on within you. And, it, and it's jarring and it's scary for the person receiving it and it's scary for the person communicating it. Um, and so I created something called the alignment conversation out, born out of many conversations about this type of thing, um, which is seven steps that you can literally go through in any conversation for change. So whether you're going to tell someone, look, I'm having this spiritual awakening, whether you're going to tell someone like something needs to change in our relationship, whether you're going to tell someone like, hey, I'm going to leave my good paying job and start doing something else in the world because I have to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and you can get their agreement on it, right? You can share it with them in a way that allows them to feel safe and secure and allows them the ability and the choice to support you on your journey. I have found that that is the single like most practical and amazing tool for us to keep moving forward in life because it is the people closest to us that we love that hold us in the frequency that we're in. Right. And if we want to shift our frequency, we're going to need to, you know, shift some of those relationships and certainly shift our communication. So that's one of the things it's a, it's a free thing. I give a free 20 minute training. It's at the soulfrequency.com forward slash alignment. If anybody is feeling like, oh gosh, I've got this talk that's brewing in me um, that needs to be shared. But I think sometimes we don't think about that. Like we don't necessarily go to, this is a communication issue. 
Um, but what I saw in my practice is at some point in the growth process, it's going to come up. Yes, I love that. And for everybody that's listening, I'm going to put that link and URL in the show notes. Um, what is, like, if you had some one or two just pieces of advice for a woman that's maybe transitioning into from like, let's say the corporate world into feeling this call to do completely something different with her life. That's radically different. She's feeling the call of her soul, um, stepping into stepping out of the spiritual closet in a way yeah. and going big with her dreams. What piece of advice would you give her? I think it's the small action steps you want to start taking. Like I'm big on, you know, moving through your day and seeing what's rising. Like if you feel like you've already connected to like, yeah, I think this is my mission or this is where I'm going to start. Like you and I started with holistic health and, you know, and it felt like at the time, well, this is what I'm going to do. Right. And there's always going to be growth and things evolving over time. And I think sometimes we think we have to get it perfect before we take action on it, right? Like I have to be fully formed before I can help other people or I have to fully heal my whole life before I have, should have a voice in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's just not the case. And so it starts with little action steps, which is why with the alignment conversation, like when you can have a powerful conversation with someone you love and maybe you walk into that conversation a little bit afraid of what they're gonna say, but you have the experience of walking away from that conversation knowing that they love and support you, that's mm -hmm. empowering. And that empowerment causes you to, to take a little more chance, right? And try that next conversation. Or, you know, I remember I'll share this. That's really funny um, because it ta it's, uh, really talks about what you are describing. When I was like, I was in the real estate industry, right? I had built this big career in real estate. So, and nobody even knew that I, like no one that I worked with knew that I even cared about holistic health. Like nobody cared about holistic health that I worked with. Like this was not going on in our company, right? And so when I went to go start my business and leave that other field, I was like, nobody's going to understand this. Like nobody goes from real estate to helping people with holistic health. Like that does not make sense, right? That's not a logical next step. And so I started, this was years ago, I started a Facebook business page and I remember I just wrote this one, you know, long post about like why I was doing it and why I'm passionate about it. Um, and I had invited all of these people that I knew from my life, you know, personal and professional to be a part of the page. And I wrote that first post. I waited two days in utter fear before posting it. And then when I finally pushed post, I would not open my computer for 24 hours because I was like, I couldn't handle it. Right. I was like, I cannot handle like looking at like what this is going to be. And the craziest thing happened because by the time I opened my computer the next day, I had 84 messages on the post and every single one of them was something along the lines of, oh, thank goodness, we've always known you'd be great at something like this. I mean, everybody always wants to talk to you about their problems. Like, it's like everyone in my life, unbeknownst to me, saw that this was such a logical step that was so true to who I was for them. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. I just love this. This is so amazing because this is, I was going to mention this earlier, but now this is even better to mention it. Like this is what, like the sacred action, like this taking action through the fear. When you do that, you literally like initiate this magician archetype, right? It's like, you have to be able to step through it though, and just follow the spiritual breadcrumb and not question it, have the faith, follow what you're guided to do. And then that's the, that's the post or that's the video or that's the article or that's the thing that resonates on a soul level because it's literally coming from your soul and that's what yep. resonates and is magnetizing your messaging and magnetizing whatever art yep. you're putting out into the world. It's so, that's so And cool. the thing that was so extraordinary about it is that yeah. not once, like looking back on it, right? Not once did I think that the reaction would be positive. Not once. Like I didn't even consider, I was just like kind of in that space of I'm coming out, like I'm coming out of the spiritual closet and no one can stop me. And I'm going to put this post out there. I was kind of like a warrior princess, right? I was like, I'm going to put this post out here and everybody's going to have to just deal with it. Right. Yeah. And, and so the love and support and like the recognition of that, I, that that made so much sense to people really shifted something for me in that moment because it made me see that just possibly I might have been the only one or one of very few that, that didn't realize that everybody was noticing that I was doing something that wasn't totally in alignment with who I was. Yeah, that's so good. 
Yeah. Uh, that's beautiful. Um, I had something else I was going to say, maybe it'll pop into my head, but in the meantime, uh, I can't, it'll pop up, but for right now, maybe talk about how people can work with you, how they can find you, where they can find you. And of course, I'm going to put all the URLs below in the show notes. Um, but who are you here to, who are you here to serve right now? What is your, wh who are you connecting with? What's your ideal client? If there was someone that wanted to work with you. So it's mainly, uh, you know, I have lots of different clients and lots of different facets of life. Um, I'm really big on creating things like what we can create in the world. So whether that's creating a new relationship or creating a business or a mission, um, typically the people that are drawn to my work are people that have done some spiritual seeking that are, you know, feel like they're on the path. Like I train a lot of people that are practitioners of different, you know, healing modalities on kind of how they can expand their gift. Um, people who feel like they are either in the midst of or on the cusp of a big transformation in their life. So whether that transformation comes through something like, like um, sudden death of somebody you love, a divorce, loss of a job, you know what I mean, that type of thing. Or if you're calling yourself up to that, um, I have a unique skill set of walking people through what I call the tunnel of transformation in a very deep and profound way. And so I just feel like naturally those people that are, you know, meant to receive that kind of find me. Um, but really I'm disconnecting the belief sets that keep us in a frequency that doesn't feel good or right to us anymore. So when I look into somebody's like energy system, I am seeing where their perceptions of life were downloaded. So it literally looks like almost like a computer. When I look into somebody's energy system, it's very similar to how we created computers. So there's hardware and then there's software that's downloaded into us, our belief systems, the things we grew up with, the experiences we had. They all started at a certain point. And some of them started prior to our lifetime. Some of them are within our family system um, or even within the collective to some degree. And we bought into them or now believe them as our own. And so I'm just bringing up to conscious awareness where those things began, how they're affecting current day. And just by making somebody consciously aware of that, it starts to dissipate that line. So yeah. that energetic line starts to fall away. And so basically it's not that programming or patterns are bad, right? There's awesome software. We want to run awesome software. Mm -hmm. So we're really looking at where, where's the pain points and the things that are feeling not so good in our life, or maybe they were good 10 years ago and they're not good today. Mm -hmm. We start to dissipate those lines. And as we do that, um, purpose rises to the surface really fast. Right. And then clarity around like, how you wanna move forward with that purpose. It's not something that I feel like I help people find. It just, my experience is it just comes to the surface. Like it's always there and it just rises to the surface. Um, and then because I spent 20 years building businesses and you know, and in the marketing space and in, in the business building space, I built several businesses. Um, I have that kind of mental aspect too of how to put it together. So we just work on the spiritual level and then combine that with like the tools and the skill sets to build it out. And where would they find you primarily online, especially like even on social yep. media, if they wanted to interact with you? I'm on Instagram the most and the handle is at the soul frequency. And then my website is the soul you can get that alignment, you know, com alignment conversation thing at the soulfrequency.com forward slash alignment. We also have um, a manifestation tool on the website, on the homepage. So it's a free PDF that you can get and you can work right on the PDF about kind of some key steps that people need for manifestation to get that into alignment. So that's another free gift. That's cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love this conversation. I think it's going to be it's really going to resonate with a lot of our subscribers and the people that are tuning into this podcast now and in the future, because I do feel that there is a huge calling right now to step up into your power, your higher self, come into alignment, come into what you are really here to do on a soul level. And the work that you're doing right now is so important as a piece of that puzzle. But I believe that we all have a piece of this puzzle with the greater with the bigger picture to really help raise consciousness on a global level. Like really when we look at why we're doing what we're doing, um, it's really to uplift humanity. It's a huge, it's a, it's a huge endeavor when you, when you get this call and um, it's just really exciting to be a part of it and to hear your story and your journey. 
That's awesome. Well, thank you for having me here. You are lovely and being with you guys has been amazing. And I just appreciate your work you're doing in the world and the way that you're showing up to support people. It's, you know, it always touches my heart when I meet people that have stepped into their calling and are sharing that with people. I think it's the biggest gift. So thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. All right, you guys, I'm going to post all of Shauna's links and of course in the show notes of the podcast. So I will talk to you soon on another episode. Namaste. If you got value from this episode, please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I'd love it if you leave me a review on iTunes. For more info beyond this podcast, or if you have a question you'd like answered in an upcoming episode, please visit thecallinguncensored.com. And for daily inspiration or to shoot me a DM, come hang with me on Instagram at spiritual CEO. Namaste.